According to Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Hajj, just over 57,000 pilgrims made the trip to Mecca back in 1921. Fast forward to 1996 and that number has shot up to more than 1.8 million pilgrims. And last year, the number of pilgrims passed 3 million for the first time. Well, with me is the archaeologist Irfan al-Alawi. He's the executive director of the Islamic Heritage Research Foundation, which works to protect archaeological uh, sites in Saudi Arabia. Welcome to you. Thank you very Hello. much, Idi. Shouldn't we be celebrating the fact that so many pilgrims want to participate in the Hajj and that fantastic growth in numbers? Well, of course we should, and uh, the place are increasing every year, but not at the cost of the destruction of the historical sites over the past 60, 70 years that we are losing every day as we speak. And of course there is a need for expansion, but not at the cost of losing the Prophet's birthplace or where he lived. Okay, well, so what is the problem with it? Let's get down to specifics. I mean, uh, let's look at example. Well, for example, I mean, recently over the past two years, they've started dismantling the Ottoman porticos. Now these are dating back 330 years, uh, built by the famous uh, Mimar Sinan, the Ottoman architect. Uh, these were there and for the excuse of expansion, they got rid of them, bulldozed them to make for, for marble walls. Uh, these are the most significant part of the most beautiful part of the building, which of course rest on top of columns which date back 500 years. Yeah, and I think we can look at another image now. So let's just change that image if we can in the screen. It will come. There we are. So what, my goodness, that looks like a massive building site. Well, it's, it's a salvage yard at the moment, I'm sorry. But yes, it, this is the expansion of the Grand Mosque from inside of the courtyard, very close to the Kaaba. And it's been dismantled, or bulldozed rather, uh, to make way to accommodate pilgrims. Now, what happens here is that we've lost columns dating back 500 years. And significantly, uh, the history has been wiped away. Uh, one of the reasons I'm concerned is about one of these areas, locations, where, where the Prophet was taken to his heavenly journey, to Jerusalem and, of course, to, to the heavens. There was the aunt's house, which do, no longer exists today. Uh, the columns which mark those locations have been bulldozed. Okay, and let's just look at, no, I think we've got one more image that we can uh, have a look at, and you can explain what that is. Well, that's an aerial. Yes, that is an expansion of the, um, uh, the Haram Mosque today, and, of course, that is the oldest part of Mecca, which it looks obviously like a salvage yard today. Uh, it's, it's accommodate more than three million people a year, but at the cost of demolition of the historical sites. My fear is we lost the house of Khatija, which is the to largest toilet today. And today, of course, uh, it used to be years, John, but now we're looking at minutes. We are going to lose the birthplace where he was born. So, Ifan, what is the solution to this? Because surely, if you have three million people there, and we've heard about stampedes and loss of life and all the rest of it, you have to be able to accommodate all those people who want to make the population. Of course, there is a way, there's a system like any other country in the world that you have to d d develop the expansion and so on. If you walk out of the Haram or the Grand Mosque, two miles away, there's vast desert, there's land, there's ample space to build skyscrapers if they like, not near the vicinity of the Grand Mosque. This is in the Quran, it's a sanctuary, it's a holy sanctuary, it's not like any other city. Another example is you don't build anything near the Vatican or the White House. Uh, for example, if a bik is touched or removed in Jerusalem, in Al-Aqsa or the Mosque of the Rock, Muslims come out protest. But when something has been bulldozed or dynamite in Mecca and Medina, the Muslims remain silent. So, I mean, I just wonder, what, are the Saudi authorities listening? Well, yes and no. They only listen if they, uh, if they have bad publicity outside the kingdom. But within the kingdom, you can start doing protests, whatever. No one's interested. But my aim here is that, of course, we have monuments which are being demol demolished in Syria. That is a civil war. In Mecca or Medina, there's no civil war in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. OK, Ifan al-Alawi, thank you so much for coming in and uh, looking at those fascinating pictures with us. Very good to have you on the programme. A lot more still to come on Global and, of course, the debt ceiling in the United States. Stay with us.